Okay, let's get started building out our web server. I'm going to be using Node.js for this. If you don't have that, you can go to nodejs.org and follow the download instructions and you should be able to set it up fairly easily. Since I already have it, I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to first off create a new file called webserver.js and then I'm going to open Visual Studio Code in the current directory. All right, so now that we have our editor open, I'm going to open the web server.js. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to grab a library from Node.js called net. So if you have Node.js, it comes with a standard library that you can use after you've installed it. And net is one of those packages. And now we're going to be creating our server. And some of this programming might fly over your head or it might not. But I want to stress that it doesn't matter if you understand all of the programming right here, right now. What matters is the concepts that I'm trying to show and um, make you understand through this, not necessarily understanding all the programming. So just bear that in mind when we're, we're coding this out because I won't spend a lot of time under, uh, explaining all of the different concepts around what I'm doing, but I will take some time and just talk you through what the code is doing. All right. So let's create a variable called server and we are going to say net.create server and it's going to take a callback with the socket connection and inside of here we're going to say socket on data. We will take the buffer and we're going to convert that buffer into a string. All right, and nearly there. And then console log the request string. Okay, so we are creating the server here. And we're saying that whenever this server receives data, we are going to take that data, which exists in a buffer, uh, which is a temporary um, mem place in memory to hold the data. And we're going to take that buffer and create a string from it. And then we're logging out that string. So basically the server is just listening for data right now. And once it comes in, we're going to log it out. But first we need to say server dot listen and we are going to say on port 999 and then we want to log this out so okay so the server is going to listen on port 999 the standard port for a web server is 80 but this is just for our local system so we're just using an arbitrary port here now I want to run this program and not index.js but web server. And you can see it logged out that we're listening. So now we can jump over to our terminal and we can use the telnet command to connect to our newly created server. So let's say telnet localhost 9999 and we're connected. So now the server is listening for incoming data. So we could let's try and write whatever we want here. And I always end up using hello world just because that's the standard. I don't know why I'm using it. Let's just doesn't matter. So we're posting hello world to the server now. Now if we go back to our Visual Studio code, we can see that the server is logging it out right here. So hello world. 
And that's coming from this command right here. So we're taking the request, turning it into a string and logging it out. So we get this. Now let's try to send a HTTP request. So we're writing it out by hand and we're saying get the root and the protocol, oops, 1.1. And you can see right here, we have the HTTP request coming in as a string, but that's it. We haven't configured the server to do anything with it. So what, what's next? We're not doing anything with the string, we're just receiving it. Well, now that we have the string, we can actually do some interesting things. And we need to understand that in order for the web server to do something, we have to actually build the functionality. And that's what we are going to be doing now. So let's go back here to our server. And we are going to code out a response. But before we do that, we need to take the request that comes in, the string, this um, line right here and we want to parse it so we can uh, use it to make some decisions in our code. So I'm going to be making a function here called parse request and it's going to take in the request string and we are going to take the request string and we are going to take the method, the path and the protocol so what this line does is that it takes this string, this request string which is basically just all of that and we're splitting it up into pieces so we know that there is a space between each of these elements. And we know that because the protocol dictates that that's how it has to be. So every HTTP message coming in is going to be the same. So we know that we can uh, use this method and split on space because we will get access to the different parts. And this is just a syntax for creating three different variables uh, from the array that comes back. So we're grabbing the method and putting in a variable called method. We're grabbing the location or the path and putting it in a variable called path. And we are grabbing the protocol and putting in putting it in a variable called protocol. So now I'm going to return a request object with all of these different pieces. And inside of the socket connection, I'm going to parse this request string and receive this object in return. So I'm going to say const request equals parse request. And we're going to pass it the request string. So uh, if you want to check that out, we can console log request dot path request dot method. Oh, let's do it the correct way. Just so it makes sense in our heads. And request dot protocol. All right. So let's restart the server because it has new instructions now. And again, it's listening. We head over to our terminal. We use Telnet to connect to our local host and we say send over an HTTP request. And if we head back to Visual Studio Code, we now get the same thing, but now we're logging out uh, variables on a or properties on a object. All right, so now that we have that, 
then we can start to do some interesting things. We can start to actually reply to these requests. So let's say that if request method is get and request path is root, we want to respond with an HTTP response. So now we want to just check if we are able to receive a HTTP message and send an HTTP response in return. So we're just checking the method, making sure it's get, we're checking the path, making sure that's the root. And if it is, we will write back to the via the socket with an HTTP response string. So let's see if that works. We're going to terminate the server and start it up again to run the new instructions. And it's listening. We'll tell that to our local host and we'll do get on the root and HTTP 1.1. And we get the HTTP response in return from the server. Great. Now, what else can we do that's exciting? Let's see. So we have some resources or files here um, that we saw earlier in a video that we were requesting via the browser. And if the file existed, then the browser returned a HTTP response that said 200 OK. And if it didn't exist, if we tried to get a file that wasn't on the server, uh, we got a HTTP response with a 404 not found. So let's see if we can replicate that. And what I need to do is I need to grab another package from Node called FS, uh, which I believe is short for file system. And we are going to use that to check if um, these files exist on our server. So to do that, we need to use something called, or we can use something called FS exist sync. And we will pass in the path. If you remember, uh, the path is this part right here. So the path gives us information about where the request wants to retrieve information from. So let's try to see if a file exists at the path that comes in. So I want to add a dot in front of here just because, and I'm going to show you why, because if it, the path comes in like this, uh, but I need the the function here to receive it as this so that it knows that it's relative to where it tries to find it. So that's why I'm adding a dot in front of the path here. And I'm sorry, that's wrong. It needs to be request path because this exists on the request object. All right, so if the method is get and if the file exists at the given path then we are going to write an HTTP response that says 200 OK. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, we will write an HTTP response that says 404 not found. Okay. Let's fire it up again with the new instructions and we will see if we've done everything correctly. So I'm going to connect again via Telnet and I'm going to go and try to get this file right here, the hello.txt. So 
txt hp 9.1 and we get the status message 200 ok which means that the file system found the file on our server which is great now let's see what happens if we try to get a file that doesn't exist so we want to get And there we get the other HTTP response that says 404, not found. Fantastic. So it's all working the way at least I expected it to work. And uh, we are getting, we, we're able to retrieve requests and dissect those messages and construct meaningful responses. Now we haven't really uh, done a lot of the work in terms of actually retrieving the file and, and sending it in the response but you can see now how we're able to retrieve or receive the message and and give meaningful responses based on on taking that message breaking it down into smaller parts and and using those parts to to make decisions and when i first learned this it helped me understand programming better it was something that clicked in my head because a lot of this is abstract away from you as a web developer uh, everything's made previously and it's there for you to use and it helps you in your day-to-day -day work but it's counterintuitive in order to understand how everything is connected and how it all works together and for me understanding that HTTP is just basic text messages being sent back and forth and understanding how the server takes those messages and breaks them apart and makes decision on what to do. It, it really helped me understanding programming and understanding why I was learning uh, what I was learning. So hopefully this will help you too on your programming journey. And if it does, let me know. And uh, if it doesn't, if something's missing, if there was something that wasn't clear, please let me know that as well. And I will attempt to create um, more content that's, that's clearer for you. So thank you very much for tuning in today. And um, I'll see you in the next